Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. We're doing uphill short circuit MIG welding today. I'm going to show two techniques that really help to get penetration as well as limit the amount of convexity. So that's, that's really the thing on uphill MIG. It has a tendency to mound up. And if you turn it down cold enough where you can control the metal to make it flat across the face of the weld, then you don't have it hot enough to penetrate into the root of the joint. So I'm showing two techniques today. I'll also list the settings. I'm using 030 wire, that's 0.8 millimeter wire. And I'm welding on quarter inch thick, roughly six millimeter thick cold rolled steel lap joints uphill. Let's go. These are the settings that I'm going to start off using. 19 volts, 280 inches a minute with 0 0.030 wire. That's 0.8 millimeter ER70S6 wire. The first technique I'm going to be using is this upside down V type motion. Pausing briefly on each, each point of the V and what that does is it allows you to trace the front of the puddle, the leading edge of the puddle. Keeping the arc on the leading edge of the puddle is necessary. Now you're not only going back and forth but you're actually moving the arc inward as you go in the V of the groove. So it looks something like this. You really can't tell that I'm going inward, but now maybe you can. Just a brief pause on each side, not spending a tremendous amount of time across the middle and sweeping the arc in, in the shape of an upside down V keeps you on the leading edge of the puddle. And it looks like it's cutting in pretty good there. I'm trying to just kind of go at, at a rate of about once per second give or take and of course that that is up to the individual trying to go a little bit faster sometimes can manipulate the puddle a little bit better and, and, and uh, prevent excessive buildup but you gotta go slow enough to prevent undercut next technique we're going to use is this series of triangles here going in one direction only so it's just it's almost like a series of loops but it's it's a triangle because you're taking the arc in the shape of that V and then just sweeping straight across the puddle in, in a continuous fashion. Let's take a look at that real quickly. Again, this is to keep your arc tracing the front of the puddle. Straight across and then in the, in the shape of a V making a series of small triangles. I'm trying to keep your stick out distance short. The stick out distance is the distance from the arc to the contact tip and you want to keep that to probably less than half inch. It's always going to be a little more than you think it is. That's why I recommend shooting for 3 8 to a half inch. Stick out and it'll be a little bit more than that. Also shoot for a 90 degree gun angle. The gun angle is always going to be a little bit more than you think it is because you have a tendency to lean it back to see the puddle. All right, these are done. They don't look tremendously different. Some subtle differences. Let's go ahead and slice it down the middle and do, do our polishing and etching and all that stuff and see how much penetration we got and also check and see if the convexity is anywhere close to being acceptable. Made sure to label them on each side and now labeled them again so I know what I'm dealing with here. Starting off with 100 grit, then going on to a brown Scotch-Brite pad, then a red Scotch-Brite pad. Provides a smooth enough surface for the etchant to work. Now I'm using a passivating solution for stainless steels here. Works really good for etching carbon steel and revealing the weld nuggets. And these are not too bad and not too much difference between the two techniques, but there is a very tiny little dot of lack of fusion in the root of that one. And if you have to play the light on these things, otherwise you can make a mistake. Like this big area out in the, and on the outside is the heat affected zone. Whereas this smaller area here, that's the actual fusion line. In volts, 280 inches a minute, we're just like barely hot enough to penetrate into that root. In this case, just barely missed it. On the other side, did just a little bit better. Both of these welds have a, a good bit of convexity, but we'll measure that in a little while. So you can see that side also got just a little a faint dot. I'm not really sure if that is lack of fusion or just, you know, there's a, there's going to be a line there because that's where two two pieces meet. So if there was a little bit of a gap in the fit or anything, you could you could mistake that for lack of fusion in there. But this is pretty typical of short circuit transfer. You don't have that deep finger penetration in the root that you would have on spray. I also ran one at 20 volts and 290 inches a minute 
and it looked like it penetrated a little bit better into the root but also got a little bit more convexity and that's that is kind of like the balance that you you're trying to achieve welding uphill have it hot enough to get penetration into the root but not so hot that you can't control the molten metal and keep it from sagging and building up too much now you also have to be careful in determining where the root of the joint is because I melted the corner off in this case so drawing some little lines like this using the software kind of helps tell where the root is and then that's the amount of convexity right there convexity is easily measured on a cross section like this it's a little bit more difficult on an actual part when you have to use fillet weld gauges and, and things like that and difficult to measure but right now uh, just kind of using a straight edge and a set of calipers is pretty easy to measure and this measures 134 thousandths or 3.4 millimeters roughly and that's excessive an eighth of an inch or 3.2 millimeters was the limit uh, going by uh, AWS D1.1 structural welding code. Now I'll go back to the slightly colder setting here of 19 volts and 280 inches a minute and measuring the convexity there you can see it's much less than an eighth of an inch 0.077 which is less than two millimeters which would be acceptable even though it looks like quite a bit a lot of convexity so quick summary here for uphill MIG welding lap joints keep your stick out short and that applies for any kind of short circuit MIG welding use a technique that keeps the arc on the leading edge of the puddle you know we trace the leading edge of the puddle with the two techniques used also use settings that provide enough penetration but still allow you to control the amount of convexity all right well that's it for today click on that subscribe button below if you like this sort of thing we'll see you next week